Martin Schultz, you're a fan of European and Japanese stocks. But can those areas still take off if the U.S. is slowing down, as evidenced by our weak GDP number and that jobs report? It's possible if the U.S. is actually slowing down, but actually, at the end of the day, we're actually thinking that the U.S. is just going through a slow pause right now. And actually, Europe and Japan are actually reaccelerating right now. Um, and so if you look at valuations, if you look at uh, economic cycles, we actually think Europe and Japan are on their way up. All right. Aside from weakening currencies, what does Europe have going for it? Sure, it's probably two years behind the United States. It's got lower valuations. Uh, Europe is also one of the biggest beneficiaries, as is Asia, on a, a lower energy price kind of situation. And um, uh, we also view uh, corporate earnings to be growing in, a, in uh, Europe and in Asia, uh, relative to the United States, where we think, uh, obviously, wage pressures, the Fed now potentially rising interest rates, um, and obviously a strong dollar are going to be kind of headwinds. Which countries do you like the best in Europe? We like Ireland, uh, we like Spain, and we like Germany. Uh, Germany in particular, uh, the exporters there are going to be the biggest beneficiary. Um, just got back from there a few weeks ago. I'm part of the PNC International Equity Fund's uh, process to visit companies and countries on an ongoing basis. And uh, we view Germany as really being at the forefront of the longer term uh, European uh, experiment. Still a lot of headwinds though. What about Greece? And is there anything else lurking out there, maybe an Italian bank or Portuguese default? What are you worried about? For Europe, we're actually worried about um, the, uh, the, the, basically the, the, intel the intelligence or the way in which um, the co companies are taking advantage of a, of a lower euro. Um, the uh, European uh, Union right now is one where the uh, Greece is a situation which has obviously been on the forefront of the headlines for a long, long time. Um, and uh, for Europe, we actually expect um, that uh, the Grexit is the one of the biggest issues. And so as populism rears its ugly head as the austerity measures uh, pr primarily promoted by Germany, um, you know, raise, rise there, really leads, leads to that situation which um, uh, gets worse. Let's jump over to Japan. The yen has stubbornly not been able to weaken past the 120 to the dollar mark. What gets it there and what will that do for Japanese stocks? Well, I think uh, Abenomics is obviously uh, the, the piece I really was talking about in terms of Japan. And uh, the yen has been a big part of that. Obviously, the first part of Abenomics is uh, inflation at 2%. Uh, we're also looking at uh, some of the structural reforms that uh, Abe is talking about. And then the, uh, the yen is something that uh, obviously has moved in uh, gradual um, Forms. It used to be obviously 85 uh, yen a few years ago, jumped up. Even last year for a year it was uh, basically at 102 and now it's in the 119, 120 range as you mentioned. Uh, we actually expect, uh, and they just held firm last night, the Bank of Japan uh, to continue easing, continue its quantitative easing process. So we can actually see the yen at maybe 125, 130 next year and a half. And do you like the exporters over there as well, companies like Toyota, or do you also like some of the consumer-based companies? Because I hear that people are actually going to Japan as tourists now. They are. In fact, a lot of Chinese tourists going into Japan. Uh, we like the exporters. We also like the real assets, like the real estate plays. Uh, and finally, we do also like some of these uh, internet companies that are doing very, very, very strong, good business, like Rakuten, uh, international companies that are doing very, very well. And so Japan is actually in an upswing. And then finally, what about emerging markets? If we do get a rate hike sometime later this year, usually our rate hikes hurt emerging markets uh, pretty deeply. You're not worried about that? They do. We are worried about that. In fact, I think in the emerging markets, you have to be quite discerning. I think in the last uh, 10, 15 years, you could have easily bought the ETF and gone home and played golf. Uh, but I think in the emerging markets, you've got to be uh, very, very focused and selective. And so we're viewing, if you just look within the BRICS themselves, for example, uh, Brazil and Russia are the kind of tougher places to be, current account deficits. You've got, uh, obviously, weak energy and commodity prices. But then places like India and China, uh, where we're actually fairly constructive on. We think there's going to be some fairly positive and they'll be the biggest beneficiaries of low energy prices. All so right. we like some of the emerging markets. All right. Thanks a lot, Martin. Thanks, Rick. Thank you for watching The Street.